All right, everybody. Well, hey, we are back uh, with the podcasters live stream here on Wednesday night. Uh, those that are watching the replay or catching this, we always do these webinars uh, every Wednesday night for the most part, provided that we don't run into a holiday or any weird travel stuff. But we're excited to have you guys here. They're joining us live and joining us online. And those that are listening to this as well. Uh, really got a great topic tonight, media and the power of expert status. We've got a really amazing rock star guest with Christine Haas here in just a second. But before we get to her, just want to go through a little bit of the housekeeping. We are honored to have you guys here, but want to give a big shout out to podcastbusinessjournal.com as one of our big sponsors for these. Uh, check it out. Lots of great information. And yours truly is now contributing uh, columnists to it on a weekly basis with different things on the M&Ms when it comes to podcasting and monetization and marketing. So check it out. It's free to do. Lots of great stuff involved on there. And Ed does an amazing job uh, with what he's doing there uh, as well with it the podcast business journal, but I want to remind you all, make sure if you get an opportunity to, to go over and make sure and connect with us on the Facebook and meetup groups with the Syntex podcasters, very easy Syntex podcasters, Facebook group, and then the Syntex podcasters meetup group. You don't need to be in central Texas to be a member of each of those. Uh, but those are the two groups we've had. And we want to encourage you to make sure and connect. So that come first of the year, you're rocking and rolling and getting ready to uh, keep up with all the great updates that we have with the podcasters live stream for you. But anyway, uh, the, uh, next week will be our final Wednesday night webinar of 2019. Uh, we've got some great stuff next Wednesday. I don't want to spoil tonight, but we'll start back up with the first webinar. It did not be on New Year's Day, January 1st. We're going to do January 8th. We've got Mark Gaberti coming in and talking about how to decode YouTube and how he's using YouTube to really boost his podcast, boost subscribers, and, and boost listeners there for you guys on your show. Uh, but I would love to hear what topics you'd like to see covered in the new year. And any special guests that you'd like to see us to have on on a regular basis. So feel free, email me, Scott at WeClosedNotes.com or message me on Facebook. Love to hear any tips, suggestions you'd like this to have or uh, topics to focus on. But let's get rocking and rolling. I know you got, uh, we've got such great stuff tonight. And this lady always brings it every time I see her speak. And our special guest, man, she has got a resume. Uh, she's a winner of 17 Emmy Awards and numerous Edward J. Murrow Awards and Associated Press Awards at her. Uh, absolutely just a very distinguished in her field. Uh, she's a previous news anchor and journalist with 17 years of experience. Uh, she's the previous director of public relations with digitalmarketer.com. It's actually how I originally met her back a few years ago at a traffic and conversion summit in San Diego with my friend Deanna Rogers. Uh, she's the founder, she's not had to say found, but founder of Genius Video. And she's also the owner of ChristineHaasMedia.com. So without further ado, uh, we're excited to have Christine Haas joining us tonight here for you. So how's it going, Christine? I'm great. I'm great. Coming to you live from Midland, Texas, the night before a big uh, media event here. So the backdrop is a, a hotel room, so it might look a little suspicious, but no, I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me. When you emailed me, I was like, oh my gosh you have such a, an amazing resume yourself. And I just know from your reputation and the amount of just dedication you've had to building networks, I have a lot to learn from you too. So I'm grateful to be on your podcast. Hey, we, we are honored to have you. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. But same way here. I mean, you're a rock star. I mean, I uh, studied journalism in college for a couple of years and got into mass media before I went into the business and marketing side. So I've always, I always joke about that. The podcast is like my own version of uh what I thought I would be is the next sports center anchor, -na -na, -na -na, you know, the next uh, uh, Dan Patrick or Keith Olbermann and, and seeing that. Yeah. So. I used to love Keith Olbermann. I would watch him, you know, he went from sports to kind of news at MSNBC. Regardless of politics, he just had that flair and that sarcasm, you know? Oh yeah, so definitely. Well, but you've done an amazing job here. I know that you've worked with, actually we've had some uh, people on the note closure show, some of your clients that you've worked with and really helped them out. Like, we, you know, we're friends both with Sal Buscemi and, yeah. uh, and he, he, he's such an interesting cat. We had him on our note camp convention, some others out there, but that's the beautiful thing. We're running in circles. And I was like, man, how do I, uh, I was thinking, I was like, okay, I want to have somebody on here as we get into December here, but uh, so many people are looking to do new things and get their word out and what you do. And you've got such a great talent as an expert in the media with what you're doing to really helping entrepreneurs get their message out and companies really explode uh, by leveraging that power, right? Yeah, it, and thank you for saying that. Um, really, and it's interesting, when I was still in the media, I would have big PR firms hiring me kind of on the side to come in and talk about why they weren't getting results for their clients. 
And I was just stunned because I was intimidated by the world of public relations. I thought these people had master's degrees in this and that they just understood messaging better than I ever could being in the media. I was great at investigative reporting and, you know, political anchoring, all of that. But I just, I was intimidated by it. And so when I saw that some of these people who are charging ten, fifteen thousand dollars a month for retainers could not even get a single news camera to an event, I was just like stunned. I thought, wow, I mean, what's going wrong? And I could tell that they were making mistakes that really were just indicative of them not understanding the news process. Mm. So for example, one big one, and this isn't for everybody to understand, but um, they would do a press conference and they were doing it, you know, 20 miles outside of the market or the news station and um, at like an hour before news time. So that's like a guaranteed not going to happen, like especially if it's not breaking news. Now, if, you know, the city manager is talking about this huge sexual harassment case and it's a big press release, all the cameras are going to be there. But if you have something that you're launching and, you know, it's it's good story, potentially, you just don't want to do it around news time and you certainly want to make it easy for media. So basically what I have done is just use the tools of not only knowing the people that I know in the business, but also understanding how reporters work and what they need and making them kind of feel like I can serve the story to them and it served me well. Um, I left the news about five years ago and then started the business and now have been able to hire on people to help me, former journalists. I really believe in having former journalists um, in the trenches with me because they get it. They understand what a lot of these pricier PR firms don't. Yeah, and there's, it's, it, there's a, a magic to it versus somebody who's just thinking they're going to announce something or, or write a press release. There, There's definitely no one, like you just said, don't do it in rush hour traffic at five o'clock or in the morning on stuff. If you can do it, pick a time, but also kind of, as I've always been told, is, is cater to who you, who's going to be out there. If you can serve up something that's valuable or serve up a topic, is that still the case with a lot of things? Absolutely. Yes, it really, and there's a formula. So of course, like, um, you know, Sal, you mentioned him, uh, I work with him and I got him on as an expert. He really wanted to talk about financial experts uh, as a financial expert. And so he was a perfect morning show type of guest. Um, we also did a news story, but in order to do a news story to a reporter, you've got to have more than just yourself. So Say for example, I'm a realtor and I want to get on camera. Um, and I'm, and I'm, as I told you, I'm teaching a course for people who want to learn how to do this. And so I've just been really kind of rehearsing this a lot lately. So I have good examples. But if I'm going to the news station and say I'm seeing a trend, and you know, you and I are both in Austin, um, I'm seeing a trend in South Austin where housing is blowing up in this part with millennials great story. So it's a great idea. It's unique. It's new informative information. But if you go to the reporter with that and say, I can talk to you all day long, you have to have the other elements of the story. So you need to be able to say, I have this great story. I also have a millennial couple that, you know, we're working with that would love to talk on camera and we have a property available for you to get some B-roll. So those these are the ingredients that a lot of these so-called PR firms don't understand. They, they think if you just serve up the expert or do a press release or something that people will come, it's not really the case. The success rate is very low unless you give all of those ingredients. And that's why, you know, I've been successful, fortunately, knock on wood, is because the reporters that I know, they know that when I come to them, I'm going to have all of it, you know, served up to them. I'm going to make it easy. Sometimes it's what we call a one-stop shop, which means that, you know, maybe it's just come to one location. You don't have to haul around downtown and, you know, fight Mopac traffic or wherever the city may be. And so I make it easy for them. But this is not unique to Austin. I mean, I have many of my clients all over the country. I set up the stories for them. They go and meet with the reporters and, you know, we've got all of the ingredients because I've, I've kind of tackled that component. But it's just so important to watch the news and understand what's really trending in your own area and then find out how you can actually be a part of it. So, you know, real estate downtown 78701 in Austin, Texas was just ranked the most expensive zip code in the state of Texas. Oh. So any realtor or any, you know, commercial real estate person or even bankers, anybody could really get in on that conversation if they provide a unique angle. So that's the, that's the big thing is that they've got their expert status because they understand the market. And so, and I think everybody has an expert status on some, it doesn't have to be just on real estate and with us dealing with so many podcasters and YouTubers, 
we've all got our own unique expert status, but just because we're an expert, say on Marvel comics, doesn't mean it's a, or the podcast on the Marvel show, doesn't mean it's a good topic to get into the media stuff, unless it's irrelevant or, or something that's going on at that time, right? Right, that's right. And it, you try to get it, you know, where it's unique or new or whatever. And so they talk about what are the best um, elements of a good news story. It's either um, heartfelt, you know, it's gonna touch your heart, it's gonna educate you, it's going to, you know, educate or inform. It's going to shock you. You know, those are the different elements. That's why breaking news has been so overused. Everybody's like, breaking news, breaking news, because it's trying to get your attention. Uh -huh. But the media, you know, I mean, the big thing is, is that you've got to realize that if you can get a story in the media, nowadays, all you have to do is get that story and then you push it through your social media. And that story will live on. And I, frankly, I always laugh. I tell my new clients when we're on our first call, I said, I don't want to talk myself out of long-term business, depending on the person. But often I'll say, you really only need me for about three months. Because once you get out there, you get a couple of news stories out there, you get the you know logos on your website, you get those stories in your social media, Facebook, whatever, or run some traffic to it. Most people don't look at the date of when that story aired. So it can rerun for, you know, just circulate them for a little while and it comes in the feed and it looks like you were just on TV yesterday. And so I say, you know, try for three months, get a few appearances. Sure, you know, I'll be happy to help you for six months or longer if you need it. But I really think that it's pretty powerful if you can just get a few and get them out because it does boost credibility. Mm. Now, the thing you mentioned the, the elements of kind of it a uh, I don't want to say, basically everything is given to the reporter given to the right. news story there you mentioned a, a couple of things you want to go back over those kind of those three kind of bigger bigger sure. things for people? sure um so if you're a ho or if you're you know an expert like um financial expert or real estate expert you could do that or you know even a medical expert for example if you don't really have what we call a victim somebody to profile if you don't have all of those ingredients and you have a good angle you can shoot for morning show interviews where you're sitting down in the studio with the anchor the thing is is that it does take some legwork if you're doing it on your own to determine if the station in your market or wherever you want to go actually offers that kind of format because there are some most of the stations that i work for they only did those types of uh interviews on the morning show on the weekend so you know during the day or monday through friday it was more of like run and gun you know breaking news and that kind of thing they didn't do a lot of sit in the studio type of stuff so you got to check that out so there's that you can do a morning show type of interview where you don't have to worry about all the other elements. You just have to be well spoken and well versed. And that's one. The next is when you pitch your story to a reporter. And that's like you said, when you want to have all the ingredients. So, um, for example, I don't know if you know Long Doan. He uh, he's in one of the uh, real estate groups. He is he runs real estate Minnesota uh, mortgage brokerage with Mike Bernier. And so anyway, they were former clients of mine in Minneapolis, great guys. And I did the same thing with them. I said, you know, let's just do three, six months. Let's get you some publicity and see what happens. So, you know, I'm in Austin. It doesn't take me being there. What I would just do is look for trends or talk to them about what trends are you seeing? Um, what's blowing up for you? And their key interest was really to get not only publicity, but also to recruit more agents underneath them. So brokers, I guess you guys would call it. Mm -hmm. And so what they really wanted to do is be seen as credible and that they were expanding and to get into other pockets in Minnesota. So I would look for the trends and then I would say, do you guys have somebody who can talk about, you know, looking for this house or I just bought a house. Um, one thing that the last story we did with them was actually during a horrible snowstorm Remember, and that freeze in Minnesota last year. And I was thinking to myself, how am I ever going to get a real estate company on TV in the middle of like freezing tundra in Minnesota? And so the story that we pitched and we came up with um, was the fact that the housing market may decline and it may look bad on paper at the end of 2018, but it's not real. December went down because nobody was coming out of their homes. Right. Well, that's the kind of angle that you're looking for. And so that was perfect. We got a reporter out there. We had them kind of freezing, like who's going to buy a house in the middle of the frozen tundra of Minneapolis when it's 30 below, you know? Right. It was a great story for them. And so these are the kinds of things that I help clients kind of come up with 
sometimes it's right under their nose and they don't even realize that, yeah, we can do this and this would be easy. Um, and then, you know, if you're traveling or if you want to get into other markets, like sometimes I've had some, um, some real estate uh, agents who have wanted to expand into other areas, areas. And so, for example, Florida was one. And so we, you know, if they're speaking there, we come up with a story there and they don't necessarily have to live there in order to speak to the news as long as we can find all the elements. That makes a lot of sense out there. And I can speak to Minnesota because I was born in Rochester, ah. Minnesota. And so I understand that, that Minnesota has two seasons, winter and July. Is about right. have, I know. worked there in Minneapolis at CARE 11 for two years. Uh, yep. cut off in the winter, yes. Yeah, and it's always road construction, always going on there too, for the most part. Well, the potholes, yeah, because of all the freezing. <laughs> <laughs> or I-35 and the bumps on I-35 once you cross into Minnesota too. Uh, that's funny. But it, um do services, um, I mean, uh, there's services like HARO, like help a reporter out, help out with some of those things to help kind of get the ball rolling? To Absolutely. Yes. Um, that is one of the one of the cheats, so to speak, that I give to people. And um, the coursework that I'm putting together about like some of the low-hanging fruit podcasts, for example, are really good. Um, HARO is really good. Um, basically, for people who don't know what that is, it's just a service where you can log in and basically every day, actually two times a day, a number of different writers and producers and reporters will say, here's my deadline. I'm looking for information on X, Y, and Z. I'm looking for an expert, send an e email in or whatever. It's great. It absolutely is good. Um, it just starts the process. And I always say, if you can get one or two, then the snowball comes because it's much easier when you pitch. Um, for example, I had a lady who's an author who had never been on TV before, and she really wanted LA and New York City out the gate. And I said, it's just going to be tough in the beginning. Let's get you one or two interviews in some of the smaller markets. And then I can use that link and send it to the producers or whatever the writers might be in the bigger markets. So yes, to answer your question, all of those areas are really good. Start small, start, you know, accumulate them, put them on your own um, about me or press area of your website and have that um, on the credibility factor. Because, you know, think about it. When I was a reporter, and I swear this is ridiculous, but it's true, you know, say I'm assigned a story about, you know, the economy and there's problems and, you know, my deadline is five o'clock. If I don't have a current resource that I'm always going to, which happens a lot, I can come back to that. That's why it's so fruitful to always be available for reporters. But if I didn't have one, I went to Google, you know, an uh, economist in Austin, Texas, or economist in, you know, San Diego, who's available to me, and I'm just picking up the phone. And most people think that because a reporter goes to them that they've got this huge resume and tenure or whatever, and, you know, God only knows, I mean, sometimes these reporters will even interview doctors, for example, and they don't look at their malpractice records. You know, they're just like, can you be available at two o'clock to talk about Ebola? You know, I mean, that's really what it comes down to, you know? So not saying that these people would actually have a bad reputation, but my point is, is that the media appears to anoint the expert, like, boy, they're God, they look at them, but really it's about being available. Mm. Meet their deadline, be a good sound bite, you know, help them get the information that they need and move on. And then my suggestion would be if anybody can do that and be, you know, consistent with a reporter, the minute you get a reporter's information and get a story, get their cell phone, send them a thank you note and send them cookies to the station, you know, pens, whatever it is to keep top of mind. Um, when I was in Houston, Texas at KHOU, I did a story with a gentleman um, and I was fairly new to the market and it was about mortgage rates. And this guy was immediately available. He was well-spoken. And then I kept going back to him because he was like, anything I can do. And he would send me ideas. He then got so much publicity in the market. We had him on our morning show as like an expert when we needed it. And he blew up and he really did tell me, he's like, you know, at the time I wasn't even in PR. He's like, I can't tell you how much it helped me to get the exposure that you gave me. Anything you need, you know? I remember his just, you know, talking about the, the leads that he'd get. So it does work. It really does, but you have to be consistent. Consistent and give it time to blossom too. Have a little bit of patience, right? Right, yes. Exactly. Not everybody has it. Like, I want it now. I'm like, it doesn't work that way. You know, Rome wasn't built overnight. Near, neither is your media expertise here, but let's keep working on it. But That's right. That's right. you brought a couple points up, though, that I've heard from others, especially like people that want to get on like a TEDx talk. They talk about 
looking to see where the TEDx is going to be at, and especially a lot of smaller markets get there and that can lead to a bigger one or, or identify what kind of niche that that aspect is going after or that TEDx talk is going and then you know, submitting that's going to fall in line with what you want to talk about because it hits the overall um, message of that TED speak, uh, talk is going on. Same thing like you just said, hey, find out, you know, find out who the uh, reporters are that are covering the stories, you know, you know, like if you're going to find out the Austin Business Journal, find out the person handling on the real estate side and right. just send them ideas to or re reach out to them and just be an asset at their beck and call if you can, right? That's right. Coffee, you know, I mean, everybody wants a cup of coffee, you know, can, sometimes they're too busy, maybe they don't want to, but if you can meet them at a networking event, say, hey, I'd love to sit down and have 10 minutes of coffee with you. Um, you know, some of the industry events too, the bigger ones, especially in New York or LA, um, even like South by, you know, those types of places, a lot of reporters go from all over the country, you can meet them and talk to them and just, and, and I should say writers too, and you can get their contact information. But yeah, and I will also say that a lot of people say, should I have a book? Should I really write a book? And I always tell people that typically books are not going to make you a lot of money, as far as being, you know, the book sales. But if you can use them as a lead magnet, if you can give them away at the end of a webinar or something just for staying through the end of the webinar, if you can do those things, number one, you can get a lot of credibility by doing media for the book. Even if you're not making a ton of money on it, you're using it for the credibility factor. So you want to do that and then have it as like give the first chapter for free or something like that online to get people, as you know, all well and good about the power of just content marketing. Mm -hmm. But sending that to like a reporter or people like that exactly. shows, oh, they, they can actually put a couple thoughts together versus, <laughs> yes. you know, blanking out or not being able to, uh, being able to collect their thoughts in, in front of somebody, right? Yes. yes. And honestly, I will tell you too, um, one thing I'll point out, if you've never done media, but you do a lot of video, um, it's okay to send some YouTube videos to the, in the pitch so they can kind of see you, understand how you speak and, and also know that you're well-spoken, you know? That's a good, that's a really good uh, tips there for you. Now, sh should somebody focus on a, if they're worried about, because we always get this like, oh my God, I'm gonna be on video. You know, the, the worry about, oh no, I need to get my hair done, my makeup, I need to go put on a suit on. What's kind of, the, the, you know, the tips you'd give people for that? Yes. Well, it depends. Um, it depends on what industry, which industry you're in. Um, for women, yes, absolutely. You know, you always want to be dressed well. I always suggest solid colors. Same for men, light blue shirts. Um, if you wear a blazer, um, you know, you don't necessarily have to have a tie, but if you have, you know, just a suit jacket to put over, that would be good to look professional. Um, yes, you always want to be ready with something. So say, for example, you work in an office and you don't get dressed up, you know, you're just normally running around and maybe your logoed shirt or something like that. Have a shirt and a uh, blazer in the closet. So in case you get news coverage or you can get into it, you've got it right there. Um, same for ladies, just have a change of, of outfit ready for yourself, but you want to, you know, make sure you give your best impression. The best thing though, is to just try because I, I mean, I was in the media, like I said, for all that time, I did a ton of video every day. I had to do my hair, my makeup, all that stuff. And I was always under the gun. Then I get out of the business and I started doing video again for this PR, um, course that I'm working on. And I was just like, oh, I don't really want to do it today because my hair, I mean, I was making all the same excuses I tell my clients not to make. I mean, really, I mean, the lighting isn't good. I mean, all of it, you know, and so it's so easy to get in that trap. But then when you do that, you start pushing the ball down the road and you realize now it's been two weeks and I've done nothing. So mm -hmm. you really just have to do it, you know, and then I will say something that happened to me. I went through, shot uh, some video and looked at it because I didn't really pay very much attention to my appearance the way I, I wanted to. I went back and redid it. There is some pain point there that I encourage people to hit. Like you look at it, you're like, oh, I really should have not done that. You know, and you just go back and redo it, but then you recognize the importance of all of the elements. You just redo things when you need to. But the biggest thing is take one step, just start, get video, get messaging down, talk on camera, practice, because if you don't start, you're just never going to do it. Mm -hmm. Good, good points there. And I, 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 something was ringing in my mind, but, oh, I, I kind of like that. Nobody that I've ever come across, whether it's on, on video or on podcasting or audio, nobody likes how they sound. Cause we always sound different, right? That's right. <laughs> I know. 
I sent a video to say one of my former clients that one of the videos that I'm coming out soon. And I, I said, here, you know, you should listen. And I said, you're getting a Southern accent. I was like, what? No, are you kidding? This news anchor doesn't have an accent. He's like, a little bit. I'm like, okay, well, you're a New Yorker. So that, that doesn't count. I don't listen to you. But yeah, I mean, you always pick apart yourself. You can't help it, you know, but it happens. But it's always best to just start. And, you know, I mean, you look at like Gary Vee. I mean, I watch his videos quite a bit. I used to watch him more. I mean, he would be in the cab, you know, just talking. And But look at the brand that he's built for himself. And it wasn't about his hair. It wasn't about his outfit. It wasn't about anything other than his passion. So I think, you know, it might be a little harder for ladies to get past that. I know it is for me. But it's, it's a good, you know, component, a good tip. Like, it does not matter. Just get out there and do it. Mm, good, good, good point there. Yeah, Gary, if you watch some of his early stuff from Wine Library TV and <laughs> shooting on the rocks and sipping the wine and all that good stuff, <laughs> you know what? Start ugly, but start. That's the whole thing, right? Exactly. Yeah, just start. Absolutely. There's a there's a lady, and I never spent. Uh, I feel terrible. I'll never remember her last name properly. Sunny L- Lazadari, I think it is. She's a YouTube expert, and I've never actually met her in person. Actually, I have at, at War Room a couple years ago, but just briefly. Anyway, she does all these Instagram and YouTube videos, and if you ever get a chance to check her out, she's fantastic. She's a former reporter, but she'll put her hair back in a ponytail, and she's just like walking around, and she doesn't care, and she will talk about exactly what I'm saying. Like, it doesn't matter. Yes, it matters a little bit, but just start, and she has this huge multi-million dollar company now because she did video every single, I think she started by doing it every day. Mm-hmm. Well, and it's the thing is it builds momentum. You get better at your craft. Um, people that are following you aren't there for the looks a lot of times. They're there for the content and the, the stuff content. that you're sharing in the stories, right? Exactly. Absolutely. That, and, and that's the one thing. And I will also say that um, there are times where sometimes if you have a video that is really, uh, you know, really good or re- can start to generate a lot of buzz, that can in itself, you know, incite a new story. You know, I mean, if you've got a trend and you're doing, I mean, think of stuff you see on social media all the time, that could get you media exposure when you least expect it. So the new media is, and I, I almost sound dated saying this, but the new media is social media. You know, I mean, it really is everything. That's why you've got stations changing their own, new stations changing their own format. Um, I don't know if you've heard of a company called Tegna. They own USA Today. They own a bunch of different affiliates of TV. I used to work for their previous company. They got bought out. Um, the company was called Gannett. But they are one of the main companies, TV companies, um, nationally. They own, God, at least 60 news stations across the country. And most people don't realize how they're all tied because, you know, they own affiliates all over. But what they did and what they're doing so well right now and so ahead of the curve of most media is they're concentrating on their own YouTube, their own Facebook. You know, they're they're really embracing that in the way that a lot of the other networks don't want to. They're kind of going, oh, no, the real true fans will come to the news station and watch at 10 p.m., it's really just not happening anymore. You know, they'll watch it when it hits their social feed. That's pretty much it, you know? Well, that's the thing. It's, it's media. It's, as I always said, whether you're in notes or real estate or tiddlywinks or whatever it is, <laughs> today we're all in the media business more yes. so than anything else, right? Yes, that's right. You've got, you've got to take that approach and realize that. That's why it's so important with just getting videos out and getting content out and even if you're just, it's a video on TikTok for a minute and a half, sharing a thought for the day, like Gary V likes to do, sharing that out and working those platforms. Are and you on TikTok yet? I have a profile. I think I have two videos on there and I just, I, I share everywhere else, you know, for the most part, I just haven't gotten quite to the TikTok. I'm not going to be dancing around on screen like most of the top videos are doing for the most part. <laughs> I know. I keep saying, okay, I'll embrace it. I'll embrace it. It's hard to embrace change. I'm like, I don't know. But the thing is, is those people who are in there already, they're getting a ton of views because they're the first people. And they always say you do well when you're the first of the game. And so just like Gary V was on Twitter, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just pushing it that way. So yeah, I mean, someday I might get to TikTok right now. I'm going to pretend it's not there. <laughs> I advise that to my clients. I say embrace TikTok, but me, I'm like, it's not my comfort zone. <laughs> Are there any things that you see people like mistakes that just, oh, like, oh, drive you bonkers. Uh, any couple of uh, nuggets of, of things yeah. that just skin crawl and you see people goof up? 
Well, and I, I will say a lot of people think that press releases will get them news. Um, and that's not, not typically the case. Um, I always say that press releases are really good. Say you're a startup company and, or you have a product that you're launching and you might eventually get investors or something like that. It's really good not only for SEO, but documenting the traction of your company. So if you can do something like that online, it's not for media, but it's really for, you know, press page on your website. So that way, if you're going to raise money, you know, in six months or a year and people go back and go investors go back and Google what happened to this company when you formed a C corp or whatever it might be, they'll see, Oh yes, they hired this person, you know, in January as a CMO or they did this or that it shows credibility and establishment. So I do encourage press releases for that, but otherwise the best way to get a news story or to get coverage is to watch your local news or whichever market Market you want to be in find the reporters information um, one of the worst things that I had as a news anchor is I would get pitches all the time and it would sometimes be from PR companies and they'd say dear so-and-so and the person was my predecessor like I'm not even the news anchor I've been the news anchor here for two years and you're still emailing the lady who was here you know two years ago so you know watch who you know who's really on TV also, if it's in your niche, you know, there are environmental reporters in different markets. There are economy reporters. There are, you know, especially with the session in different states, if you're in a capital city, you're going to have political reporters. So, you know, really understand what they're talking about or what their normal beat is. Um, even if it's crime, you know, maybe you're seeing a rash of crime in a certain area of town, you know, go to the crime reporter, or somebody who's consistently drumming up that type of thing. Even if they're not always beat reporters, they're typically going to, you know, gravitate more towards certain types of stories that they like. Um, so know the person, you know, when you email the person, you can, another tip too, there is a website called newsblues.com and that's N-E-W-S-B-L-U-E-S.com. And for like, I don't know, $5 a month or something, you can subscribe. And what it is, is it's a TV insider um, website. So as a news anchor, I would go on there to be like, oh, so-and-so got fired or this happened here. But what happens also is that you can go to the station database. And what it does is it, if you, it'll give you all the news markets. So it'll tell you like, oh, if you were in Austin, Texas, your market is 30 something. But if you're in San Francisco, your market is five. So it'll give you an understanding of what size the market is. Mm -hmm. It'll also give you a list of all of the um, stations, radio stations, TV stations in that market, addresses, email addresses as a news director, phone numbers. So it gives you a whole database of who to contact. So say, for example, you're visiting Miami for an event and you're speaking, Scott, and you want to be on TV. So you want to be an expert or whatever. So you go to Miami, you can see all the radio stations, all the TV stations, information, access information. You can even call the news desk in there and say, can I have the name and email address of your morning producer? So that's just a really good tip of how to do that because everybody just thinks that if they throw out a press release that people are going to come to them and they wonder why it doesn't work. It's just because you have to build connections and you have to get to the right person. I mean, think about your own email inbox right now. I mean, mine is insane after all the holiday stuff. I mean, nobody's going through it diligently. So you've really got to pick up the phone, Obviously, email is the best way, but try to find the right person. And the right name, as you said, is critical. Don't call somebody back, somebody has not worked there for a couple of years. <laughs> exactly. You maybe take the time to check out their, their most recent article or their story and comment on that so that they actually know that you're listening. It's, like, it's a lot like getting booked on other podcasts. You want to do some due diligence before you get rocking and rolling and do a That's blank. right. Yeah, exactly. You, you want to make sure that you compliment them just like you would, you know, what, what's going to catch your attention. If somebody says, Hey, I saw your podcast last week, you know, comment about that, let them say good or bad, but then, oh, by the way, I might have this to connect with that angle. So let them understand that, you know, what you're talking about. Makes a lot of sense there for it. Now you are doing a great job of working with people and you've actually, you've been putting together, I mean, you're in Midland getting ready to teach something, but you've got a, a course that helps people do exactly what you're talking about. One, you got some time to talk about that and kind of what's rolling out with that in January. Yeah, I'm very excited about it. Thank you. It's the first course I've ever done. I've learned so much from digital marketer and from you folks about how to do that. And so I'm excited about it. 
the really the reason why I'm doing it honestly is the fact that I've found a lot of people who have come to me online or in person, whatever it might be, and say, you know, I'm just starting out in this business of consulting. I want to be an expert. I want to do all of this. How much is it? You know, and they're all excited. And then, you know, I don't think my rates are really that high, but they're higher than the comfort zone for a lot of people who are starting out. So the monthly retainer is just too much for them to chew on. And so they'll say, well, maybe when my income gets to a certain level. So I thought, you know, gosh, if I could do a course with some of the stuff that really will just get them to where they probably need to be to just get the, the ball rolling and to get some media exposure and teach them how to do it themselves for a far reduced rate, I would be giving a lot of value. So that's what I'm trying to do is kind of bridge the gap for people so they can understand. And like I said, it's not rocket science. I mean, I wish I could say I'm so, you know, expert status. I mean, I, I'm grateful that I've had success, but it's only because I know how the media works. Mm -hmm. And so me telling you how to do it, it's just like if you have a recipe for dinner, if you've got all the steps and the ingredients, you'll do just fine. So same thing for me is what I'm trying to do is put a course together for anybody, whether they're an author, you know, uh, financial analysts, whatever it is here, like I said, news blues, here's how to go to the stations. Here's the contact information. Here's an example of the pitch that I would send. Um, and so, you know, all of those elements really do come into play. And I'm really excited because I've had a lot of um, people like, you know, beta testing. And so we're going to, you know, get them on TV and see how they did it and then get the excitement going. Cause it's, it's really not that hard. It just seems like it. Well, it seems like, it seems like that for a lot of people because people aren't used to that. Like, Oh, I, you know, I never thought I'd be on TV you know, talking about this or speaking at Harvard. Like I've had some of my buddies, they, they talk about that as one thing. And I'm like, it's all about step-by-step step, having no, knowing what to do, what not to do is probably the most important thing, what not to do that you don't shoot yourself in the foot. Right. That's right. And, and happens an expert like you who knows that, hey, knows how this all works, knows where to reach out to, knows when to schedule the things, all those little things that just come from experience and having somebody who's the uh, uh, media mogul and, and can making things happen out there for him, right? Well, and you know, I had a client that just came on with me um, last month and he was kind of hesitant. He's like, do you, you think it's really a good time to do that because it's the holidays? And I said, you'd really be surprised. Honestly, the holidays are some of the best times because Everybody, every news station is so sick of covering the same old story. It's like Groundhog Day, the turkey, you know, the homeless shelter, not to say that they shouldn't be covered, but you know, it's consistent, always the same thing. So you need unique angles. And so in fact, I have a, another client who um, got on TV last weekend and she has a unique concept. She has um, she an elopement company where people can come in and elope quickly in Texas. And it, you can also get in a limo and drive around and get married, you know, in front of your favorite sign. It's a lot of fun. But she told me she got one story on the air on Saturday right after Thanksgiving. And she told me she booked 15 weddings the next day. Wow. 15 and she I, she's blowing up my text messages I'm like whoo I'm so happy I made her happy you know it's the stress is worth it because she just finally real I mean it took a lot we had to find the couple that agreed to be on TV right. all the same ingredients I'm teaching for for my students same stuff I mean it's not rocket science but it produces I mean 15 weddings booked I mean the next day I'm pretty excited for her so it, it does work oh totally 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 can mm -hmm. it's just all about putting it, the work in and, yeah. and staying patient and building it up and, and get and honing and really polishing your craft yes. uh, as an entrepreneur or a, a marketer to, to really help drive the, and get the word out what you're doing and sh show that you're an expert at what you're doing, right? That's right. Exactly. And especially when you're unique, when you can mm -hmm. give that unique angle. And like you say, I mean, everybody will go, oh, the holidays are not a good time. Uh, there's a, think about yourself, your own behavior on the holidays, you're watching football, you're in front of the TV more than you normally would be. So you might be watching the news when you normally aren't. So it's actually a very good time to get in the news. That's good, good stuff there. Where can people find more information about uh, that, that course and, and when it comes out or is it out already that they can start taking advantage of it? Yeah, I should be more prepared on that. I don't have it. I, I would just tell people to go to my website and I will, you know, feel free to email me or whatever. And I have um, all of that coming in January. So no it's ChristineHaasMedia.com. You know, I actually have your uh, pulled up here. Oh, just in case. So let me share this here. Uh, share the screen here. Let's see here. There we go. Christine Haas Media, uh, ChristineHaas.com there for you. Um, you can see that about artwork services, live video, contact us there for you. 
Uh, you've got some great video case studies in on here as well with your yeah. services and stuff like that. So that's yeah. awesome. I, I want I I want to know when it comes out. I want to know and let's talk about having you back on and uh, talk more about that later because I think it's such a valuable thing and so many people are trying to separate themselves out there marketing wise. And you said something I think I think is so valuable out there. No matter what, whether you're you know video or a podcast or whatever, is be unique. Be yourself, right? Yes, exactly. Yes. And um, the one thing I forgot to mention, if you go to my Facebook page, I have a, um, a Facebook group that I'm just starting called Media Max Out. And so if you go to Christine Haas and then I can just add you, uh, I think you, yeah, there it is. Media Max Out. It's there. Or you could just go to me, either one. Um, I think you have to ask for permission. Yep. Yeah. But if somebody wants to do that, yep, that's it. That top one. If, um, you know, we've got 70 members in there and people just asking questions about, you know, this type of stuff, like how to get on the news. And I've got some videos there. So feel free to join that group. And we've got a bunch of free information and content. I try to do it every, every week or so. You, you do a great job on here. I'll tell you that right now. It's a great group. I've uh, already pulled some great nuggets off it. We're implementing first a year. And then even just tonight with uh, some of the great things you've shared out there, just absolutely Great stuff, Christine. So well, excited yeah. about it. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. And hopefully we can uh, check back at the beginning of the year. Now I need to, to get some of your expertise. I'm glad to launch my own podcast. <laughs> hey, I'm glad to help you out in any way. Can. It's easier than most people believe. So be, be glad to have you on there and get rock and roll. You've got, I'm sure you've got a Rolodex of amazing guests that can uh, uh, really share some great nuggets and really skyrocket to the top out there pretty fast. So Fingers crossed. Yes. Well, thank you so much for having me. Hey, in, enjoy Midland, Texas, all right? I'm going to party it up tonight. You can only imagine. <laughs> well, good stuff. Thank you so much. Thanks, Christine. All right, everybody. Hey, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the Podcasters live stream. Uh, man, great stuff there. Christine dropped some great nuggets for you to start implementing immediately. Start looking at what you want to accomplish in 2020. Start making those media connections and reaching out to them and, and looking for angles to help set yourself apart from the, the mundane and the day in day out grind that a lot of times we see on, on the media and different stories, but uh, take action, go do something and we'll see you all at the top everybody. Have a great evening everybody. Bye.